Hi guys, so I've got something to show you today. It's called the Elite Proto Shield, and it's by a company called Elite Hardware. Um, they do open source hardware, so I will put some links down here. They sent this to me for free, and it's actually my birthday, so it's kind of like a present, uh, and I'm a little bit excited about it. Now, uh, I've got it in this little packet here, so I'll, I'll pull it out, and then we'll, we'll take a look at what it really is, and I'll explain it as well. So this is it, this is the Elite Proto Shield. It hasn't got headers soldered on, I'm gonna sort that out in a minute and I'll show you an easy way of doing that. Uh, and it's got this large prototyping area on here where you can, you can sort your projects out. Now that would be a, a small little breadboard thing, you know those tiny ones that you sort of stick on, they've got double-sided stuff on the back. I'll show you what that looks like shortly. Um, and it also comes with these little tiny proto, oh, oh God, almost dropped it then. A little little tiny PCB things that go on the top and they match up with uh, the holes there so it's sort of the same area that you would get with your breadboard and the, uh, the tracks run across same as breadboard does but where you would normally put your chip across here it's actually got a line that runs all the way along here so your chip will straddle those two lines so really useful extra rails running across there which is good. Now. You may have noticed already on here that I've actually got some um, dip sockets there. That's because this is also uh, a board that you can use to program your AT Tiny chips. So you've got like the AT Tiny, 85, 84, or 45, I'm not sure, whatever. <laughs> the 85 is that size. And then you've got, is it 23? I can't remember. The, the larger chips with more pins just go, can go in here. Now, it doesn't break out all of the pins. Uh, using these dip sockets, so you don't get to use um, these dip sockets as a, a place to stick your chip and then have the proto board here. You'll have to put it on the, the proto board, um, but it does mean that you can just plug it in, turn your Arduino into a programmer. Uh, it's got a little uh, sort of jumper here to switch to programming mode uh, and then program your chips across here, which is pretty good. Now the advantage of using a board like this is that if you're prototyping, you've got a breadboard, you can stick everything on top of here and take advantage of the voltage regulation of your Arduino. You can whack uh, your AT Tiny on the breadboard too if you want to, or if you're just building something off your Arduino and you want to have everything all in one place, it's a great place to do it because all of these pins will come out on the header. Now I just mentioned this, uh, this jumper here. These aren't actually needed anymore, these jumpers. Uh, the Arduino IDE no longer requires you to put a capacitor from res reset to ground, but this offers great backwards compatibility. And if you're using something other than the uh, the IDE to program it, you may still need that uh, capacitor across reset. So I'm just going to put that back. Uh, of course, it's got a reset button on the top here, uh, and it also breaks out five volt and ground to the middle of the board as well, which is, can be very useful, especially if you're using this and you're taking advantage of those rails going across the centre there. So I think that's an excellent addition. Now the Elite Proto Shield costs about £6 from Tindy, where you can buy it. Um, again, the link's just down there somewhere. Uh, which I think is actually pretty good, because with that uh, six quid you're going to get uh, three, of these, three of these little things. Um, and that's more than enough for little projects you have lying around. In fact, if you remember, uh, I made a little tiny intervalometer uh, and it looks really crap on this little tiny bit of uh, Vera board and uh, actually almost blew the thing up by uh, reversing the voltage. Uh, anyway, one of these things would have worked perfectly so I think these are a really cool idea uh, and you know they've got mounting holes already so it's good if you want to stick in a project box or something. Uh, so six quid from Tindy. Uh, I think it's pretty good. You should check it out. Uh, there are other options available. I won't recommend just one product, but this one's a nice one that's come to my attention. Now I'm going to get it soldered up and uh, I'll show you what it looks like and how it works. I totally forgot to say, sorry. Um, I was going to show you the easiest way of uh, soldering these uh, and I was just going to go away and solder it and then bring it back all soldered up, but I'd forgotten I was going to show you. Well, the easiest way for me at least uh, and I think a lot of you will find it easier to do this, is just to use another shield if you've got one lying around. Uh, so I've just got a little SparkFun MP3 shield here and what I've done is I've popped the, the headers that will be going onto the proto shield onto the end of the pins. 
Now this means that they line up perfectly and they're relatively straight because I sort of bend the pins on mine. So you might have to wiggle it on a bit. Um, but it means you can just pop your, your shield on. It's not going to work now, is it? It's not going to go in smoothly, I'm sure. But once you've got that in, if I can... Yes, there we go, finally. So once you've got that in, you can solder those directly on and it stays where it is. So no more wobbling about, no more bending pins to fit stuff in, which I ended up having to do before I figured out this. Uh, so I'll go solder this up and then uh, we'll try it out. So I finished soldering it up. There it is. It looks quite nice as a shield actually. It goes quite well. Fits perfectly. It's the same, same sort of dimensions as the, the board. I did, I did solder some of my, uh, set, some of my head is on a bit wonky, but it's fine. The pins bend, so it's okay. Um, there is a, a thing you need to be wary of though with this proto shield. Uh, the dip sockets at the end here that are soldered in so that you can throw in your, uh, your AT tinies. Uh, the pins on the bottom protrude down underneath the bottom of the board. Um, and they need to, that's for stability, you can't cut them too much shorter than that, otherwise they might just pop off or something. But uh, if, you, if I were to push this board too far down, so if I were to push those pins too far in, then those, uh, those dip socket pins might touch the, the outer casing of that USB. And that should be grounded, so it would mean that it would ground the pins on there which you don't want to happen. So maybe a bit of electrical tape or just don't push it all the way down um, and that would sort that. So that was a lot easier than I expected. Uh, okay, it's kind of bright. So I, uh, I threw together a quick blink example because you know it's the easiest one to, to knock up really. And I was wondering how easy it would be to program the chip and then throw it on the breadboard. But actually, the moment you've got your Uno, your clone, uh, programmed as an ISP, uh, so that it, it will program your AT Tiny. All you do is you uh, switch this this uh, jumper around to go as the programmer. It's on and off position. That puts the cap into the reset uh, pin and into ground. Uh, and you throw your chip into the dip socket. Once you've programmed that, so you then open a sketch and then then upload it. So your uh, your blink example. Remember, when you go into those blink examples, you need to change the pins around. So this one's using pin zero, which is uh, pin one, two, three, four, five. I can always forget five <laughs> on the 80, tiny 85. Uh, you program that, then you pop it out, whack it on the breadboard, throw in power and ground, and you're good to go. Actually really useful for prototyping stuff. That would have been really, really useful on, uh, on this because I was forever having to pull cables out and put them in again to program this, so actually a great idea. Now, it's up to you whether it's worth six pounds or whether you want to get a, a dedicated ISP or if you'd rather just homebrew it yourself and do something uh, on a breadboard, it's up to you, but this is actually really useful and I would recommend this to beginners um, who are just starting out with the AT Tiny. I'm a beginner. Uh, or, or people that just like the convenience of just throwing stuff on the Uno because it's a nice little platform that that gives you steady voltage and uh, gives you two voltage options without having to put a regulator on your, your, own, your own project to start with when you're prototyping. So I think this is cool. Uh, not just for the, the AT Tiny stuff as well, because you can use this prototyping area for whatever board you've got underneath. So it could be a Mega, it could be uh, yeah, your Uno, it could be a Leonardo, it could be whatever. So I think it's cool. You should check it out. All right, thanks guys.